the Father is spirit. Why do I bring that up? Because we wrestle with the fact that we can't see God the Father. And no one has ever seen God the Father. We've only seen Jesus the Son. But we're told in Scripture that God the Father is spirit. And that's interesting because I was never presented that. But that makes sense that it was in, that it was in Scripture. And so what is spirit? We understand the concept of spirit. We say things like the spirit of that person or the spirit of being American or the spirit of that company or the spirit of that team or the spirit of the times. We know what it means when someone says these things. So when we kind of think about it deeper, maybe we can define it as the spirit of something is the animating feeling that resonates deep within us. It is a projection from someone or something that touches something deep within us. We can't always describe it fully in words, we do our best to. However, we know what it feels like. We know the experience of it. Hmm. Interesting. We're also told in Scripture that no one has seen God the Father and that God the Father is spirit. And we see this early on. Genesis 1, 2. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And again, in John 4, 24, God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. 1 Timothy 1, 17, To the king of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. 2 Corinthians 3, 17 through 18, now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. So in Christianity, we have the concept of the triune. We have God the Father, which is spirit, Jesus the Son, which came down and manifested God's attributes, embodiment in flesh, and then we have the Holy Spirit that's given to us so that we can act as righteous as possible, trying to renew our minds and our bodies to become more like Jesus, to participate in bringing the perfect love of heaven down to earth. And so, okay, we're told that that Lord is spirit. So what is God's animating spirit then? What does scripture say? We are told that God is the following. We're told that he's love. We're told that he's truth. We're told that he's the way. We're told that he's the alpha and the omega. He says, I am who I am, and he's the light. And so let's, let's look at the scripture that backs this up. God is love. That is found in 1 John 4, 8. Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. God is truth. John 14, 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. God is the way. Again, John 14, 6. We just saw that. He is the Alpha and the Omega. That is, he is the beginning and the end. Revelation 12, or 22, 13. Revelation 22, 13. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. And so God is a omnipresent spirit. And a part of us kind of recognizes that because when we think about human beings, we have a body that is physical. We have a mind 
we have a spirit. So mind, body, soul is kind of what you hear in Christian circles. And then when we ask, who are we? Are we our body? No, that doesn't make sense. What are we? We are our spirit. What is our spirit? It's our consciousness. And what's fascinating is we, even with all the technology that we have today, we can send text messages through the air. We can send video messages through the air. We can capture videos and share them across the air. That's crazy. Now we have Neuralink. We're doing all kinds of crazy stuff. We don't understand consciousness and how it manifests itself and what it is and why an unconscious, lifeless universe would create consciousness to observe itself. And in a law of, of physics, conservation of energy, conservation of matter, and this is a Buddhist thought process as well, what is always has been and always will be because energy is neither created nor destroyed. So by using that law of physics, it always has been and it always will be. And so that's what what God is though and God is spirit and we have consciousness which is a spirit and when we talk about somebody we usually define the self as their spirit animating itself right through personality and through behaviors and through actions and 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 the way they project themselves out into the world that's their animating spirit and so continuing on I am who I am Exodus 3.14, God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, say this to the people of Israel. I am has sent me to you. God is light. We see in 1 John 1, 1.5, this is the message we have heard from him and proclaimed to you, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. So God is the spirit of love, truth, omnipresence, light, no darkness, the beginning and the end, always has been, always will be. So that's interesting that because also in our definition of Corinthian love, we're told that love endures forever. And so these concepts, it's hard for me to imagine that a lifeless, unconscious universe would create something as powerful as the concept of love and truth and morality. Maybe those are just human manifestations of, of social contract and rationalization over time to maximize human flourishing through some complex interplay. However, giving credit to human consciousness for these discoveries is, is dangerous territory because that means man can shift them. That means they're subjective, and I believe that they're objective and that we discover them and that we need to not elevate any person above another person at the most fundamental level, and that's what Christianity is about. It's about valuing the human dignity of every single person person in all corners of the globe doesn't matter how rich you are how poor you are doesn't matter what color your skin is doesn't matter your sexual orientation does not matter your gender pronoun we are called to love everyone we we all wrestle we all fall short and so that's interesting that that might have existed for all time and again it's hard for me to wrap my mind around some force some physical force and some lifeless force, evolution, creating that. It just is, it's hard to imagine, hard to wrap my mind around. But let's go ahead and go. So Jesus came as an example for us to try to emulate. Jesus was the physical embodiment of God's love, truth, light, beginning, and end for us. We become who we are through embodiment. This, that is, we act out what we feel our appropriate behaviors. We're constantly observing our own behaviors, our own actions, our own thoughts, and kind of the repercussion or the consequences, positive and negative from that. We're observing other people's actions, behaviors, and thoughts, and the consequences and repercussions of that. And then we make decisions on what to do 
to navigate our life and navigate the unknown future to create order out of chaos. And so what this is saying is, and in scripture, I'll, and I'll get to the scripture in a second, Romans 12 too, but the concept in Christianity is we're called to embody the king of kings, which I went into earlier in the video. So we're going to go deeper into that concept now. Romans 12 too, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. 2 Corinthians 5.10, we destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. We do this through the Holy Spirit. Ah, here we go. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. And so I apologize. I forgot to write down the scripture on this one. I'll kind of get it in there after the fact. But this is Jesus talking to the disciples in one of the Gospels. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Yet a little while and the world will see me no more. But you will see me because I live. You also will live. In that day you will know that I am in the, my Father and you in me and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them he it is who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and he will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. And the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I am with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away and I will come to you. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced, because I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it takes place, so that when it does take place, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no claim on me. And so, right, we're called to emulate Jesus through the help of the Holy Spirit. And so the Holy Spirit acts as a conscious in our mind. So with, with prayer, spending time with God, with scripture, getting to know God's attributes and character as revealed to us through scripture, as these, these flow of inform as the flow of thoughts and intuitions come to us, they're one, they're one of three things or one of two things. One is it's the flesh, right? Which is sinful in nature, or it's the Holy Spirit. And so what we do is through the Holy or it's God, the Father. And so through the Holy Spirit, we're able to discern which is our flesh, which is sin, and which is God's will, and which is God's attributes. And so that's what it's saying in Scripture. And then finally, 2 Timothy 1.7, For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. So he gave us the Holy Spirit, which gives us power, an authority to act with love and self-control. That's what that is saying in my in my discernment, in my interpretation of that is persevere, you are powerful, you have authority to spread love, but you have to practice self-control through work and through disciplining your body and your mind to act in a certain way towards the goal of spreading love to all corners of the earth.